All right, you bunch of yahoos, strap yourselves in for another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. In other words, shut up, sit up, and pay attention. So how are you, sir? I'm okay, partner. I'm okay. I'm glad you made me, man. Thank you very much for making the time. Sure. I'm glad that all these university kids are taking your lead about protesting this great country of ours. Yeah, burning it down to the ground. Yeah, <laughs> telling telling how horrible it is to 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 be on mom and dad's dime. You know, doing nothing for four years, five years, and well, know. I'll have you know, um, I'll have you know that I made an offer today to fly any university student one way. Yeah, good to Tehran. Right. Iran. Because they said they would take them, right? Yeah, and I'm willing to fly them there. Good. So I, I announced it on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> no takers yet? And it's on my website. Well, you can go to my website. Can you have your tech guy go on to the website now? I don't know. Tech, tech's a strange term. Um, Actually, I, I can, but it's not going to. The screen mirror here. <laughs> Let me pull it up. But you can just read it. Yeah, yeah, I'm going right there. Just and it's just you just robsnyder.com. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, the T Ron said they would take these idiots now. Um, uh, they will, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Send them all. Fuck. Send the professors too. So I said uh, any American university student protesting against Israel and for Hamas. I will pay for your flight to Iran so you can really get the education you are looking for. Yeah. Please go to robschneider.com. Men, please leave your sandal size. <laughs> Women, please leave your burqa size. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. There it is. Don's looking at it right now. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I haven't, let me see if I can go to the site. So we signed up so far. It's free, Don. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm willing to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. I might just pitch in one too. Yeah. Um you, you gotta put your money where your mouth is, Don. <laughs> Do you, you hear me? Them, uh, them frat boys in North Carolina. I know. How great is that? That was awesome. That was awesome. Now now they've got they start taking donations. They've got like four hundred thousand dollars to throw a big party. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Rich, um, I don't know the guy's name, but uh, from Big and Rich, the the country country bag and Big and Rich, he he's gonna play there. You know, play who's there. gonna play there? Rich, Tom Rich, Mike Rich. I don't know from Big and Rich. Well, that's nice. That's great. Yeah, love you know, those kids, man. Wasn't that amazing? Yeah, yeah. So he's gonna play play the, the at that at that party for him. Well, cool. I want you, I want you to read my the thing. It's on my website. Did you go to the Rob Schneider? Just, just yeah. Want just... a free want a free flight to Iran for Rob Schneider? Please fill out this form. Step one of one. Full name, email. Which college do you attend? Are you majoring in? Gender studies. Do your parents pay for your college education? What is the name of Iranian Ayatollah? Who is your favorite mullah? Women, what size burqa do you wear? Men, what size sandal do you wear? <laughs> Women, do you wear eye makeup? On the only portion of your face is visible. Men, have you started growing your facial hair? <laughs> They 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 don't have any facial hair. I'll guarantee you that. I don't have any any submission so far. Yeah, well, strange how that happens, you know. Strange. Because it's a free trip, Don. Yeah, yeah. To to everything you wanted, everything you guys wanted. Yeah. Go over there. And, uh, you, you can take shit. advantage. You can take advantage of a free trip, you know, and then you could get right. the education from this, you know, the education that you want. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So that's. Yeah. I don't think they're, I don't think they really appreciate the, um, what the offer is and what they're getting. This is the thing. 
So they don't understand. I don't know. They don't understand what they're getting here either, though. No, obviously don't. No. You can say death to America here, but I don't know if you could say that. And uh, you can't say death to China and China. No, no. You can say death to your own death. Yeah. In China. <laughs> yeah. Death to myself, China, you know. I think so. That's a fucked up country, man. You know, I mean, so how were things in the lower part of the Arizona? You guys look, getting I'm uh, I'm I'm I get the my hot wire going, you know, around my perimeter and um no illegals have, have uh permeated it yet. So, you know, I've got my, my guard dogs and my hot hot barbed wire and um you know, rolling bands of uh, of alligators, you know. So well, that's not a way to get them in, Don. <laughs> that's oh, the opposite. Oh, yeah, I, that's the opposite. Oh, shit. you're keeping them out, that's which not, is that's not what we do with America, Don. Oh shit! You have to catch. You have to get with the program. The program is to get as many people in unchecked, and then especially from China. And uh, military age men from North Africa, yeah. Syria, and uh, Chinese nationals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And have them come in the country, make sure that nobody does any background checks on them. That's right. the program that you're not with, Don. I uh, know I'm not. Obviously, I've, I've missed that part. You know, I'm still 20 years behind. You know, <laughs> well, there's a, there's a decent chance that you might have another four years of this opportunity. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, I better not. Oh happen. my God. Wouldn't that be terrible? Four years, Don. Don. Four that, years. That would be terrifying. Wouldn't it be? Four more oh. years, of this fucking moron. Jeez. Can you uh, can you believe that uh, Trump may actually uh, be president from prison, and then he could pardon himself? I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah of course. Yes. And how crazy is this in New York? It's stupid. It's, it's just fun. And these people are so fucking stupid, they're eating it up, you know? And oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you would think, you would think, um, President Trump would be their favorite, um, their favorite person from New York. You know, he's done so much for that fucking city, you know? He was, he was in 9 11, 2001, when them fucking ragheads crashed into the two towers, <laughs> President Trump, um, was the first person there, you know, with with construction company to help um, dismantle that stuff, you know, help dig through. Yeah, he was there, Johnny, on the spot, man. Well, truthfully, he's not even a he's he's a conservative Democrat. That's the uh, yeah. funny part is it doesn't even. Uh, but it's just it, it is a um, uh, it's an attack. It's a kind of Marxist thing, you know. That what's funny is this whole rejection of the West. Um, Western culture and this whole attack on Western culture and everything, which is what this is. Um, they don't, uh, and when they, and they, this, this kind of adoption of Marxist principles, they won't even, they don't even admit or they don't even realize that Marx was from the West. Right. He's an extreme anti Semite and a racist. Yeah. And you don't have to dig that far in his writings to, to look at all that. Right. Right. But he, um, creator of, Eugen of eugenics, yeah, <laughs> of eugenics, yeah, eugenics, yeah. Well, he was certainly a proponent of, um, certainly a proponent of of, of race based theories, for sure. So, Don, what what happens in, at your house these days? What do you do? What what is the what is the afternoon like for you? Uh, a lot of napping at my house because I have two two English bulldogs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They, can't, they never get enough oxygen, so they have to lay down. Yeah, so they nap a lot, and um, once you get those bulldogs, you know they get the rhythm going. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. And then they just pass out. Yeah, and once once you hear that, you know, in stereo, it <laughs> hits you and lulls you into sleep. So you become the third participant. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's better than melatonin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, it's great. You're out. How about you? What do you do at your house, Bernard? Well, I got little kids, so it's the opposite. Oh, oh, okay. They're up early. 
they want to play. And then on the weekends, when they could sleep in. Yeah. They don't. It's time to shine, yeah, yeah. They're up, yeah. And How old um, are they? I have no idea, but they're pretty small. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're seven and eleven. They're they're cute. Cute as all can all get out. And that's seven and eleven. That's the age you want to tie them up and throw them in the closet. Are you talking about cute? No, they're they're fun. They're these ones are fun at this age. Like I, with my seven year old, we just went golfing for the first time. Yeah. And uh, it's not easy because, like, right now I have a torn groin muscle. Ooh. You would know about these injuries. That's a tough one to get over. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, a twist, yeah. <laughs> I know. So I was, uh, you know, I, I hit a one eighty. That was the best I could do today. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta drive too. You can't walk. You can't walk with that uh, groin muscle. That was rough. It was rough. Um, mm. but um, I just remember how how completely tolerant you were. When people saw you at a bar and they were drinking and they wanted to show how tough they were. Yeah. <laughs> and so nice to not end their life as they knew it. <laughs> well, it's like people coming up to you and trying out jokes, you know? <laughs> yeah, but there was this one particular guy that I found it was just like, what was he thinking? Oh, yeah. I don't know what was happening, but you were like, uh, you showed a, 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 an incredible amount of, uh, Grace, you were very gracious. Well, partner, and, it was your it was your show. You know, I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna piss on your parade. You know, no, Shit. no, that's a good movie. That one holds up. That movie holds up good. I'm sorry that I. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah, I just didn't get out everywhere that I wanted it to. But it's like there's some places it plays all. It's I think it's on Netflix again, and it plays all over the world. The best compliment I ever got in any movie was yours. Yeah. The bathroom scene, you looked at me and said, what steroids are you taking? I went like, yeah. <laughs> that's good of me. I was working out like a, a, a mother effer on that one. Look good, man. Hell, yeah. I, what were you taking? I wasn't taking anything. I was the best part. Uh, that was, no. That's why that was such a good compliment. I'm a fucking pro athlete. I know the, I know the steroid taker when I see one. <laughs> <I'm> on. <laughs> I wish now I'm on him. Now I'm taking testosterone. Yeah. <laughs> just to maintain, just to maintain. Just get out of bed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How's how's the back doing? Your back? Uh, it hates me on days, you know. Hates hates me, and then it really hates me, you know. Okay, so at least you have some relief. Yeah, yeah. When when I get drunk <laughs> enough, build up enough. <laughs> so basically, sometimes your your wife, some, sometimes your back is your ex wife. Sometimes. Oh my god! Oh. It's just a just ex girlfriend. A yeah. dog that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so um now tucson what, what do you get yeah the thing i have some friends who are well i've you know my rancher that i get the the grass-fed meat yeah. which is pretty close to there and oh, so you no. can get good beef and like you know um uh, unadulterated cow milk like raw milk you can get yeah. that there right yeah uh my my girlfriend's got a goat farm too so i mean you want goat milk she can get you goat milk um that's good for a goat milk, though. Yeah, I don't know. Man. I've I've seen her. I've seen her get down there and milk that fucker, man. Ain't nothing good about that. <laughs> it looks like a lot of work for not a lot. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah, a lot. It seems like a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> well, she gets a lot of that with me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, when you think of the old days. And I, I know you, uh, like, some of the incredible fights that you've had. And, um, I mean, first of all, I mean, y you were a fireman. I don't know if a lot of people know that about you. Yeah. And that's how, and you, you got into the fight business just kind of by accident. And at the very, very beginning. And do you, do you, by the way, in that same question, when you see these guys on uh, the Octagon now, how do you think they hold up to like the original prime fighters? You know, it, it, it's completely different. You, you can't compare the two. I don't think, you know, because it, it went from a fight to a sport, to a TV show, you know, <laughs> that's a good it, way of saying it. Isn't it more of a TV show now? Yeah. Yeah. It definitely does have that. Um, you know, that effect. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So, buddy, as far as the craft itself, with uh, it's it seems to be much more than when you guys did, which is much more 
grappling and that kind of stuff, which was, you know, I never found it that interesting. The, um, and I still don't, I mean, I, I kind of understand it more, but, um, I would say that, that wouldn't you say it's a third grappling ground game now? Whereas with the prime fighters, it was just a, an all out brawl yeah, <laughs> and, uh, with well, legs, fists, elbows. Unless, unless it was a Gracie fight. And then, you know, Gracie, Gracie is the one who, um, uh, you know, came up with this. Oh, well, our Davies came up with this, um, um, the idea, you know, the, um, which, which is the better style, blah, blah, blah. And then the Gracies come in and they said, well, this is the way to make a, um, a, uh, infomercial for, for our jiu -jitsu. fighting style for jiu -jitsu, and we can yeah. make money off of it. And that's basically what it became. It became an infomercial for Gracie Jiu Jitsu because um, Orion Gracie was the matchmaker. So he got all stand up fighters, you know, to come in. Yeah. And then his brother. And um, so all these all these stand up fighters knew nothing about ground skills because that that back then everything was separated, you know everything was style versus style and it was strict and a lot of bowing and scraping, you know, and ass kissing, you know, and um, so uh, we we get in you get in there and. He also he got all stand up fighters, and he also got guys who who were legitimate contenders or world champions. You know, they were several times national world champions, but they were a little bit past their prime. You know, right? And um, so, but you know, once we got in there, and Gracie, you know, Gracie kicked ass. He did a great job. He, excuse me, he cleaned everybody's clock. But excuse me, um, damn, but. You know, along number three, number four, number five comes along. And it's like everything. The United States of America gets involved in something. They take it over. And that's what happened, you know. I mean, Gracie was great in number one and two and, and barely survived number three. And, um, and then, then then it was over, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, guys that not, they made not trying to bad mouth, not trying to bad mouth them because they changed, they changed the world the way the world views martial arts you know especially when you get on the ground it used to be you know like like amateur wrestling you get them on the ground put it on their back it's over you know yeah here um you get them on the ground put it on their back it's just the fight's just begun you know yeah and, and, and then there's actual there i mean for some people who know what they're doing there's actual an advantage of being on your back yeah if you're if you, the brazilians can do what they can do with their legs which is oh, phenomenal yeah. weird and um uh, but uh, extremely successful. I would just say though that the um, but going back to the beginning of it was was just uh, brawlers and some people who would use and have a technique which was like your technique, which literally was in those little old gloves. Which is if you duck your hand, if you duck your head, that guy's going to break his hand. Right, right. That, that's a that's a technique that's like. You know, but that's like 19th did. century right. technique. <laughs> yeah, you get that from that movie, uh, Charles Bronson movie, Hard Times. You know, yeah, where he says, "Yeah, what's what's that guy's uh, what's that guy's head?" You know, many many fighters that broke their knuckles on that on that cranium. Oh yeah, you know? that was a great fight. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I was trying to do the remake of that after oh, Big State. Really? Oh, that would have been awesome. Yeah. Oh man, let's go. Let's do it. I really wanted to do that. No, but I, I, but at the end of Big Stand, I tore both my rotator cuffs. Yeah. And then on the on the last day of uh, the fighting, I like I tore this one and then I tore that one. Ooh. And I was in agony. And then I went to go see Doctor, um, who was the Clippers doctor, Doctor Ned or something. Yeah. And he looked at me and said, "How old are you?" <laughs> and I said, "I'm 42." He says, "You really gonna need your shoulders?" <laughs> so he said, what, what do you What do you know? I said, can you live with the pain? That's why I, I, I think you get out of here. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, it's not, I'm not going to make it any better for you. It's not like you got to slam dunk the ball like all these other guys. No, <laughs> you out. And he said, just, just deal, work around it and just, you'll be all right in six yeah. months. Yeah. And he was right. Nine months later, it was, it was better. I mean, I still can't, you know, for a long, for 10, 10 years, 
lifting this way hurt. Right. But, right. But I mean, surgery, you never know if you're going to get better once they cut you, you know. Yeah, you don't know. It's, it's you don't a, know. It's a crapshoot. But it is a crapshoot. Yeah, because they I had a partial replacement on each shoulder, you know, because they said if you do a full replacement, it's you're done. You know, you can't use your shoulder anymore. I mean, what the hell yeah. good is that? You know? <laughs> I know it just it reminds me of like Willie McCovey was a friend of mine, and you know, those old baseball players, you know. They didn't have arthroscopic surgery. Right, yeah. They didn't have like, you know, a cadaver piece that you could put on the knee and like, they didn't have any of that. They didn't have like a little bit of uh what's it called? You know, mylar or whatever shit they put in there. Now they basically, we're going to cut you open, scrape everything out, stitch you back up mm -hmm. to the point that it was like, you know, Mickey Mantle, like, you know, he, he imagine how good that guy could have been if he was sober and also if he had two legs. Yeah. <laughs> he won the triple crown on one leg. I mean, that's how good he was. Triple crown derby? He, he was a racehorse? <laughs> triple crown. That means <laughs> average home runs RBIs. That's pretty damn good. Yeah, it is. You know, baseball cards are crazy expensive now, by the way. Really? Yeah, they are. Yeah, I, um, I got back in uh, 87, 87, 88, yeah, I had bad shoulders, so they cut off the end of my clavicle bones. You know, that's what that's what they did back then, you know. You know, just saw away, you know. And uh I know, I mean, if you have a clavicle break, which I'm sure you had, the yeah. bone stays goes right up like that. Eventually <laughs> yeah. you're wearing shirts. Because there was a guy that I know that was a um Navy SEAL. And yeah. this guy was, you know, killing people in the South America for our government. Right. And he fell out of a tree and he's sniping somebody, a drug lord. And then he broke his, his clavicle. Ooh. And it just healed because he was out in the middle of the jungle. Yeah. And it healed the bones taken up like that. Oh. And uh, they said, we're going to have to break it to yeah. fix it. He said, I'll be all right. But he's got, his shirts wear out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like having a hanger is too short. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he just his shirts wear out that he wears. I mean, they run out there. That point. <laughs> but just like a guy just, you know. I'm gonna live with that bone that way. Right. It's just a different. It's a different person. A different. It takes a different type of person to have a piece of your clavicle cut off and go. That's what did you do last week? Well, <laughs> I played a round of golf. I, you know, took the wife out and what did you do? I had a piece of my clavicle removed. <laughs> removed. You know, it just made made me feel better. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So what's your pain on the average day between one and ten? Is where you at? Oh. I was Seven or eight. Yeah. Seven or eight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On a daily basis? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I mean, man, I'm sorry. You get used to it. I mean, I mean, I've been I've been to nine and ten before, and people will say they're at nine and ten. Bullshit. I mean, I've been there before. You don't want to exist on that plane. You know, that that's a miserable Ben plan. is screaming. Yeah, yeah. But real, real quick, uh, Don Don's pain tolerance is also next level. So his, you know, a is ridiculous for other people. <laughs> Speaking of which, what what kind of tea were you drinking there? Ice, iced. <laughs> <laughs> iced tea. Okay, that's good. That's a Tucson drink. It's non. It's non alcoholic. If that's what you're asking. Yeah, sir. I figured. I, I know. I figured it was kind of a tea. Yeah. I drink a lot of tea myself. I've been going crazy with coffee recently. Yeah. You know what I'm doing now, Don. Get you're, not gonna, brand. you're not gonna like this. No, I, I'm doing this. I take a, a, a tablespoon of ghee, G H E E ghee. It's like this clarified butter, uh -huh. and then I use like a tablespoon of MCT oil, and then I use. I got a really nice coffee maker here, uh, Miele, I think they call it. Yeah, it's, it's German, M I E L E, I think it is, and it's it's. Well, just, I think you would stay away from German. Um appliances you know you know what though i mean my my what all the jews that, that died my family they would understand because the coffee's that good you know it's a very <laughs> tricky it's a very tricky thing but um this one uh like my dad we know who's a um uh my my dad was a jew in world war ii and he would never drive or uh, buy a uh or he wouldn't buy him for himself but he bought my wife a mercedes <laughs> well you know it's a safer car yeah so but but anyway so um 
Yeah, so that that is that coffee is can keep you go till two in the afternoon without eating. You're fine. Really? Yeah, and I just do it. I try to, you know, now that I and now I now that I got the groin injury, boy, this one's a while. I tore last time I tore my groin was playing baseball in high school. Really? I was rounding free because nobody stretched back then. No, no, hell no. Back in back in the seventies, I just remember like the baseball players didn't even lift weights. Yeah, you don't want to get bulky, right? So you're, you're not- everything, yeah, everything is your 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 coach. You can't. You'll get bulky. You will lose your 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 speed. You know, you won't lose it. Oh, you won't be able to get your bat around because you can right. do muscle. Yeah, and so that's total bullshit, obviously. But uh, so I was rounding. I mean, Maybe I got to prove that. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to make it to third. But I really started because the guy bobbled the ball out in the outfield, and I was like, I got this, and I re- I was just on the way to. The round second base, just something snapped or just ah, and I just remember like that. <clears throat> six months to heal, as a sixteen-year-old. Yeah. So I just imagine like, cause and it would just start to heal. You play again, like ow, yeah. start to heal, play again, ow. So it's the same injury. Now I just turned. You're a young man. I just turned sixty over here. Wow. That <clears throat> that's a bitch. So um, this groin injury, I think I'm. Uh, I think it's gonna put my. Uh, it's gonna put me in my golf game down for quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember, shit, going back to 2001. You know, I was doing pro wrestling in Japan, and my contract was up. So then I signed with Pride, and so I was, I was gonna fight Gilbert Ivel. Um, September 28, 2001, you know, two weeks after 9-11 happened. And on the last match of that of that week, I was done doing pro wrestling, and I was at home training, and then they called up Brian Johnston. God bless him, had a stroke. And so I had to go in there and finish the tour for him. And so on the last match of that of that tour, I took a bad, took a bad bump and I pulled my adductor and, and my groin and um, then took a couple of days off, went back, or I strained them. Then I took a couple of days off, went back to work out. I pulled them. And then, oh. yeah, and then um, took took another uh, five, seven days off, you know, and went in for the fight. And first match, I mean, first First move, I did a takedown. Boom! It exploded, man. You know? My uh, Steve Owen, my coach, corner man, you know, trainer. Uh, he said he could hear it explode over the crowd. You know. Oh, done. And it was miserable. miserable. I'd already had it wrapped, you know, because it was so bad. They wrapped it and shot it full of Novocaine, so I could limp out there to the to the fight. You know. <laughs> no, you're just another level human. Um, yeah. It'd well, be- I- it blew I mean, that- and it hurt and and um I went home and I says, Look guys, I, I told my doctor, I says, Hey, I need a vasectomy because we just had our second our second daughter. And they said, Well, you know, it's like in a five month waiting, blah blah blah. And I <laughs> said, No, I need it now. I'm done for the next fucking um twelve weeks. I said, I need it now. You know, and they said, okay, so they fit me in there. <laughs> well, just delayed the divorce. That's what it did. <laughs> I, you know, one of my favorite memories, I have a lot of them with you, but uh, going pig hunting in Sacramento was very yeah. special. That was the great. beautiful thing about pig hunting with Don is <clears throat> you can pig hunt with a gun, but uh, what I did was I, I made the mistake of like, you know, I'm not a good a shot. We both hit a um, coyote at the I same know. time. Yeah, a little. We were standing, and I had a, you know, and I was on the ground with a rifle so I can really be balanced. And we both hit this coyote at the same time. Yeah. Ping, ping. No, yep. Two hits on that guy. Which nobody is like, knew. Yeah, nobody knew because they only heard the one shot. Yeah. Yeah, because it's just a, so it was both of us, you shot at the same time I did, and we got both hits. And um, it went. But, <laughs> yeah, there was a a um. Uh, by the time the coyote said, "What's that?" It was over. 
Well, well, uh, and then I killed the, I, I hit the, the biggest pig of the day it was 225 pounds. And I, I thought I hit it. And you said, uh, you got it. And I said, no, I don't think it, why? He, he ran away. He's on the other end. And he just went to the other side of the hill and just collapsed. Right. And I'm like, I don't know how to clean a pig. And you're like, I got this. And you just, the next thing I know, the pig's cleaned. And then we kept shooting and you got one. And then mine took off when yeah. I was looking and I, Got it, and I, but I didn't get it in the shoulder, so I didn't do the kill shot. Right. I got, I got, I just missed it, and I got it in the back leg. So we're just laying there in this little uh, heap of this, heap of anger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, let me take it out of his misery. He said, I got this, and you pulled out this man knife, and you jumped on this thing, which is like if people don't realize like how, what the, how tough that is, a pig can bite through your bone. The pig biting ratio radius and the the power of the pig bite can literally go through somebody's bone. And Don just like you went at that pig with and just like it was over quickly. It was it was actually less cruel than if I, I shot it. It was just like it's gone. But you jumped on that pig. I was just I couldn't believe it. Cause they, you know, people don't realize how how fair all those animals can get. Oh, yeah, yeah. It just takes two weeks for a, an escaped pig to start <laughs> growing <laughs> horns, and uh, they, and then they, two weeks, two weeks it starts. Yeah. So, and you know what those assholes did in California, Don? Oh, what do they do now? Those assholes after that hunt, because I think we did it two years in a row. Yeah. After that hunt, they stopped giving tags to people. Uh, and they just instead of shooting the pigs and using them for meat, which is what we did, yeah, yeah, turn them into sausage, yeah, and donated it. We, um, they just poisoned all the pigs. Oh God! So that no one could eat them, and no one can can you know. There's no hunting, no no. In, oh God! No, they couldn't be used for food, and then and then of course the poison and the animals that eat the poison pigs, right. of course they're gonna die. Right. So you just have like uh, California. There's just nothing that they can do except ruin things. That's all they can do. And until until people in California wake up and realize that uh, they're going to have to kick them out and get anybody. I mean, not that the Republicans are loads better, but you have to mix it up and give them a chance because otherwise they just want to control every aspect of your life. The right. newest things, besides what kind of stove you want to get, they tried to limit your, you know, put a generator on your car not generator, a general on your car. So you can only go 85 miles an hour if it's a car in California. Oh, governor, a governor. Governor, I'm sorry. Yeah. Governor. <laughs> I remember that's right. Because they had those in like rental cars and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. It's not going faster. Yeah. <laughs> and so, But they want to do that in your own car. And it's like, hey, listen, there's no reason to go over 85, but you you got to make, you got to let that be my decision. Right. Not Absolutely. That's why, the, that's why you have highway patrolmen ticket those people that aren't smart enough to see them, you know, before they get caught. Yeah. Or don't don't buy those little radiator, you know, radiation uh, readers. Yeah. <laughs> guns. <laughs> yeah, but the newest one, you like this in California because they just can't. They don't. They they don't. They they don't know how to make laws that improve people's lives. So they, no, just, they don't. They just fuck them up. They just keep interfering in people's lives. So the new one that they have done, you're gonna like this. If you spend a hundred bucks, you can do get this when you're going through the airport. You get this trusted traveler program, right? Right. And then you go through TSA, right? And then there's another one. If you want to spend another hundred bucks, it's called uh, Clear, which is not at every airport, but they basically take your TSA stuff and then you, have, you use the eyes or yeah. you know, thumbprint. <clears throat> and they know you because the back they do a background check and then you go right to the front of the line, you know. And there's a lot of people who do it, so the front of the line doesn't mean like cutting right. everybody off. Now they want to get rid of that. Why? They say because Double? in a very elitist state, they're like, no, it's not fair. But like, right. are they going to get rid of the uh, carpool lanes? That's not fair either. Yeah, you know, going to get rid of the, uh, you know, the fast pass at Disney. You know, for people, you know, the people who, who the Democrats in California, life's not fair. Right. Sorry. Absolutely. The sooner you deal with it, the more likelihood that you'll have a chance to figure out something you can make a decent living, as opposed to all these college kids now who, you know, you realize how useless an Ivy League education is at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not talking, I'm not talking about the finishing schools or the graduate schools. 
because I think those are about 85 percent conservative. Harvard Law, Harvard yeah. Business. I don't know about Harvard Medical, but Harvard Law and Harvard Business is uh, at least okay. the business school is 85 percent conservative. Really? Wow. But you would never you would never if you cared about your kids go, you know, I'm going to send my kids to Harvard. No. I just the undergraduate school. I mean, it's just it's just a complete utter disaster, as Trump's favorite word. It's a disaster. These people, <laughs> the losers. Yeah, my oldest daughter, Katie, she graduated from Johns Hopkins, and then she went on and got a master's at NYU. But thank God she got her master's over the internet, you know, and not not That's on good. campus. Yeah. Well, that's good. Well, there's no reason to be in the on campus there. No, there's not. Oh. <sighs> it's crazy. Thank goodness. Thank goodness we, um, you know, we dropped out of school early. Yeah. <laughs> so you graduated though. You graduated your university. No, sir. No, sir. You spent two years though, right? Two years what? Did you go to? I mean, you were grad. You were a college at wrestler. Yeah, I read. I spent five years, I think. I, uh, yeah, five or six, shit. Um, like, like John Belushi. Damn it, six years of college down the drain. <laughs> <laughs> so what were you studying when you did study? History. Uh, history with a minor in English, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, you know, that's not bad. I took history, too. I loved history. I did, too. Yeah. I did, too, yeah. Because you get an understanding of, like, oh, yeah, well, they were just as crazy as we are. Right. And they, and, and they had worse problems than we did. Well, they didn't have that technology we have, but they muscled through it, you know. Shit, yeah. I mean, they did. It's like, like this fucking um, uh, global warming, uh, climate change bullshit. Hey, dummy! Yeah. Every hundred years, shit hits the fan, you know. Every hundred fucking years, that's why there's hundred year flood, hundred year snow blizzard, you know, hundred year drought. Every hundred. There was a, my new book, shit. by the way, for your listeners. Uh, you can do it, of course, it's called. You can do it, Speak Up America. I I, I have a climatologist, Nick Nikoloff, who um, works for the United States Geological uh, Society. And, you know, it's just, it's crap, the global warming. And it, it's, yeah. it's it's unscientific, and they cherry-pick yeah. data. And believe me, I was one of the early proponents of it back in 1990 when they were first, um, when they were first coming up with some of the, uh, calculations of what's happening and i said yeah i mean that sounds interesting but then the more you dig through it the more you realize it's just bullshit mm -hmm. and it's complete bullshit you know and, and unfortunately like um robert kennedy who's a friend of mine and he's running for president and i like him and he's a good guy but yeah. he's wrapped up into that same crap and it is crap and what happens is he says like well it's a greenhouse effect well gr just just the term greenhouse right just right. you know, it just says a roof. Our <laughs> atmosphere, our atmosphere doesn't have a roof. Right. It's a self-regulating system. Yeah. It regulates itself. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, so it'll fix it itself. Has, yes. The whole idea of this life-giving gas, CO 2s which feeds trees, and there's an explosion of trees happening. Yeah. And yes, you have the and and the um, the Gulf, uh, the Great Barrier Reef, and, and Alaska has never done better in the last century. The last 50 years, it's doing really well. And they go, nice nah, it's because of COVID. That they, that, no, it's not. It was doing really well before that. And it's doing really well now. So the idea, I mean, the planet has a lot of problems for sure. But I think overfishing and I think, you know, as far as deforestation, I think we need to, we need to do more planning. But they just have these, it's just this money grab, global warming, COVID. It's just so... It's just a money grab where they don't actually have to do anything. And these corporations, the reason why they were able to, to do the COVID drugs is because they had something. You know, they come up with something, and they, yeah. even though it didn't work, the COVID. Well, it's, all, uh, it's all chicken and little theory. You know, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. And that's, that's all it is. The fucking world has been coming to an end, you know, since, since uh, Adam and Eve got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. You know, yeah. there's no well, you think about it at the you know. end of the 19th, the end of the 19th century, there were all these doomsday. Yeah, yeah, it's over. It's all you know, it's it's always gonna year happen. Year 2000, year 2000, it. Yes, we're done. Every every election is like this is the most important election. Yeah. Just if you if you if you accidentally turn on MSNBC, I don't recommend that you do, but if you did, 
they would be saying today, like, well, we won't be able to broadcast <laughs> here from now. <laughs> Trump said, well, but Trump's going to turn off the TV? No. Right. It's Trump just the. Trump doesn't care about you people, you know, the MSNBC he doesn't because you're uh, you're a bunch of fools and uh, he can he can make he can say more in one fucking sentence, you know, that you all could say it all day long on your on your stupid channel. Yeah. And like, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful this time with Trump will listen to better people. Yeah, because he did. He listened to Fauci. He did listen to me. He, he didn't trust his own gut. If I can be perfectly honest with you, right. I'm, not that, I'm not in with the inner circle, but I, I did, you know, I did, I do know some stuff <laughs> means nothing, but um, he, in November of, of 2019, he said, oh, this is, you know, they're going to try to do some crazy shit with this, blah, 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 China, blah, blah, blah. But then he bought into it hook, line and sinker four months later. Yeah. So it's, it's three months later and it's, you know, and I get it. I mean, I, I don't know who, what call you would have made at the time, but um, I don't think he's going to do that again. So no. we have an interesting thing coming up, Don, uh, May 27th uh, till June 3rd is the World Health Organization Treaty. And it's 85 or 87 countries that are going to sign away their, their nation's sovereignty. And one of the countries attending is the old United States. So what happened yesterday, it's significant in Oklahoma and hopefully in Arkansas, they'll put this through in Tennessee where the states are going, fuck you. Mm. We are not playing along. If the World Health Organization is not going to overrule, is not going to overrun our state. Right. So thank right. God we're a republic because this complete, you know, you know, brain dead isn't even a, a, a the right way of saying Biden. Biden is a corpse attached to a car battery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and no. this guy, he just, I don't know who's really running it, but it ain't him. When Gavin Newsom went to went to the White House to talk things over, Biden wasn't even there. So, you know, oh. he's not in charge, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but there, but it's going to be the Biden administration is going to sign this thing with the World with the World Health Organization, which not just essentially, but does give over the sovereignty so that we are, are going to have to do what the World Health Organization when they're new emergency and they're all full of shit. They always say emergencies. Yeah, yeah. Their numbers are off. They, they said 3.4% of deaths going to happen. And it was basically just the same as the flu. And these are liars. Yeah. They're schemers. They're funded by evil demons like Bill Gates, who funds 80% of it. I mean, how this guy is allowed to buy farmland. And, and, and then they finally, at least they found out recently that all that fake meat causes cancer. Really? So you're beyond burger answer yeah oh. so so it's all crap you know and it um so that's that they want you to eat bugs don so you, what bugs are you going to want to eat but when they go to the all bugs what's going to be your go-to midnight <laughs> snack bug well the cockroaches are up already man well get them while they're alive you know <laughs> what are you going to put on it i mean how do you make a bug taste good I and mean, that's the question yeah barbecue you gotta you gotta down that thing with a honey mustard or barbecue or you know ranch dressing, you know, yeah, big shot yeah, of yeah, honey mustard, honey mustard of that that really spicy uh, yellow mustard at Chinese restaurants. Yeah, which has, <laughs> that is a shitload of MSGs, by the way. Does it? I remember, like, I'm because you know I'm such a I used to be such a health lunatic. I still am, but uh, it just sounds better to say I used to be. <laughs> no, I, I I used to, you know you go to Chinese restaurants. Can you please have no MSG? Right. And, it's, and then what was it? Can I get some of the hot mustard? What's the hot mustard made out of? MSG, you know? So that's what an idiot I am. <laughs> your viewer, your listeners are smarter than I am. So they'll, they'll, they won't make that same mistake. Well, thanks for a compliment. <laughs> oh, good. So well, any, any plans for the summer? Any place? What is, where are you going to go? What are you going to do? When you go downtown Tucson, where do we see Don Fry? Where, where, do, where can people, bump into you on friday doesn't go to downtown tucson you know I, I live i live north of tucson little little town called catalina and okay. i don't don't stray far from the reservation you know it's where's the restaurant that you go to on a friday night like tonight oh heck where the where do i go where do i go um there's lupe's restaurant um mexican restaurant up on um oracle junction it's great Great restaurant. Okay, good. Good to know. 
Well, you know, when you come over here, my wife, she's cooks, she's legit. She cooks uh, Mexican food. She's from Mexico City. Really? She like she's she cooks the shit. Oh, You'll dig it, man. I'm waiting on I'm waiting on my invitation. Man. I'll be there. Anytime. You know, you know, just you just Anytime. show up, man. You know, I show up and the door's locked and you get the Dobermans. <laughs> it's schnauzers, but don't worry about it. They're cuter. <laughs> yeah, they they attack dogs or schnauzers. Nibble, nibble when you. <laughs> no, but they're big. It's a giant schnauzer. Oh yeah, well, yeah, yeah it's not quite not. as big as Doberman. <laughs> it's a little less vicious, but they attack. They're good. They're trained. They're vicious, but they're also hypoallergenic. It's you know that's the point of my life. I'm at. I have a hypoallergenic attack dog. Yeah, because <laughs> the German shepherds make me sneeze. So yeah. I gotta have something that's got like more hair than whatever. So right. I got the guy trained it, you know, forty thousand dollars later. Instead of, a, instead of a, a big macho guard walking your walking the dog, you got a little fluffer walking around friends and, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a gay attack dog, but yeah, it, 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 exactly. it's very beautiful hairdo, but it'll it'll bite somebody's kneecap. What's if, the favorite food your wife me. makes you then, buddy? What's that? What's the favorite food your wife makes you? Holos con puerco. What happens is it's beautiful pork, chunks of pork that yeah. are cooked in, in beans, yeah. and it's it's stewed for a long time, and it's got like radishes and cilantro and habanero, and it's just got spices, and it's like it's beautiful. I mean, it just makes you realize like you really do got to cook something for hours, and it's something that has like, and usually all the dishes like that are come from like from poor people. Because what happened, like the uh, the feijoada, which is the Brazil. Speaking of uh, Brazilian uh, wrestling, the feijoada was so beautiful, but it was literally feijoada became like for the poor people. It was like what the rich people didn't want. So you got like pig ears and pig's feet and chicken feet and all this stuff, and they put it in this they put it in this stew of beans, black beans, and they cooked it. And then they add like hot sauce and, sp and like, you know, different spices. And now that's the national dish. So isn't that beautiful? You know, so things like, so I don't know if uh, frijoles con puerco is the same, but it's beautiful. So that's one of my favorites. And that's a Yucatan uh, Mexico uh, dish. And the Yucatan is very spicy. It's hot and it's uh, it's kind of too sunny weather, except humid. But yeah. you're not, I don't think, I don't think Don Fry is good in humid weather. No, humid. no. I start, I start melting and crying. <laughs> now my dad, my dad grew up in West Virginia, and okay. he, he was dirt poor, and so they had uh, uh, cornbread and pinto beans. It was you oh, know, yeah, the ham, big ham hock in it. That was that was his favorite. You know, I mean, yeah. When you grow up with that, that's your thing. Yeah, yeah. the Filipinos, like my mother, she used to cook. It was a Spanish dish because you know the Spanish were in the Philippines for four hundred years. Right. You know the Philippines, they don't even. There's, there's nothing indigenous about that place. It's, yeah. it's even this language. Even this, even the country is named after King Philip of Spain. <laughs> not even anything, you know, Philip. They still Filipinos. They're not, they have no woke plans on changing it anytime soon. And <laughs> they cook this thing with um, literally like has a tree leaf in it, bay leaves. Yeah. Just a couple of bay leaves, a little bit of vinegar and brown sugar, soy <laughs> sauce. And this thing, it's really sweet. It's sweet rice. It's rice vinegar, which is sweeter yeah. than regular vinegar. Right. And then they you put it in a pot and you come back, you come back in an hour and it is just lovely. The fat from the chicken just helps cook it. And it's, you know, the interesting thing about vinegar, like a white rice vinegar, because what uh, some meats so like duck and like um, chicken, they're a little tougher. Uh, to get so the sauce can get and uh, get into and penetrate the meat, you need a vinegar, and you don't want to use a vinegar that's too bitter. So they use the uh, the white, the sweet, sweet rice vinegar, and it's just you know, it's it's what they had anyway, you know, um, because like my family when I was in the Philippines, it literally it took four days for them to come from Baguio to come see me in Manila, yeah. and uh, when I was there, gosh, over a decade ago. Well, they got that three-legged burrow, you know, for top speed is, you know. <laughs> they, and this this is by, like, mobile transportation, bus and, like, a van. <laughs> and so they came down to see me. My uncle was 80. Wow. He, weighed, he was my height. He weighed, like, literally 35, 40 pounds less. 
And he was still in the in the rice fields. That's why they they have really good legs and really good you know open yeah. hips because that's just that's what they did. They just in there on their head. They're literally sitting on their ass and just picking the rice up. And so they had this rice and they make this beautiful, they make different stuff out of it. They make rice desserts and they make rice with their meal and they make uh rice wine and they make, you know, when you're done with the rice wine, whatever's left over is vinegar. Yeah. And yeah. that's sweet vinegar and that's beautiful with meat. So, and, and it's got, I'm getting hungry now. Huh? <laughs> no, I'm thinking of, um, uh, shit. Rice wine. I'm thinking of the name of it. And, uh, Sake, sake. Or something. sake. Oh, I, I love sake. sake. I love sake. Oh, I can't man. believe I just blew, drew a blank there. You know? Hey, no, me too, man. That's where I'm at in my life. Did yeah. you ever spend any time in Taiwan? No, sir. No, sir. Taiwan, it's one of those weird things where, like, um, you know, your movies can be a hit some countries and some countries. And I was looking on the map when I was at Disney, and um, they show you, like, internationally where you're where your country is and like in France, it was nothing, you know, Belgium. Okay. And then Germany did like, you know, 3000 per screen average. And the United States was like 4,000 something per screen average. And then you're just looking at this thing. And then uh, I go, well, you know, Australia, 4,000 per screen average. This is good. I said, where's the biggest? And they said, well, it's 26,000 screen average. And it's 24,000 in Hong Kong. 22,000 North Korea, South Korea, it's North Korea, South Korea, <laughs> and 26,000 in Taiwan. Wow. So it's like, it's, I mean, it's like every seat, every show sold out. So I said, well, I'm going to go to Taiwan. So uh, <clears throat> I went to Taiwan um, for to promote the movie. And the place is just, it's a great, it's a great country. You know, the yeah. Chinese threatening, blah, 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 and the United yeah. States they're very they got a great air force over there china doesn't really have a great navy and they don't really have a great air force otherwise they would take that place over yeah right they got the best jets and and believe me they they're very well armed and they're they're doing good <clears throat> but um they don't want to piss china off too much no and they had a place over there don which you and i would have grabbed you would have gravitated to if you and i were over there it was called snake alley and they oh. just closed it down last year Really? <laughs> snake Alley, where they have live snakes. You can go there and you could get, I swear to God, I'm not kidding. You could get, get snake piss beer, snake jizz beer, snake blood beer, and you're drink and you're just and you're drinking you're taking shots of this thing called Ungape, which is a Chinese liqueur and very strong drink. And then um then you have this stuff, and I went like I was with this guy from Taiwan. It was actually Shaquille O'Neal's doctor. Dr. Shen, he's the guy like, you know, Shaquille, Shaquille O'Neal, he didn't want anybody to know, but he played injured all the time. He had a different kind of injury because he was like seven foot two, seven foot three. So he would get hit. You don't realize how much hitting happens in basketball. Yeah. But he's up there and they're just elbowing him. And usually an elbow would hit some other guy in the arms or whatever, right? So that would be the elbow. And then, you know, you could, your arms would recover from bruises or whatever. There's only so much damage you can do to your bruising your arms but they would hit him and instead of hit him in the arm they got him in the stomach Whoa. so we'd have these injuries that these ab abdominal bruising and stuff like that and that would get in the way of, of his moving and stuff and so this guy dr shen what he would do is he would do this cupping which i know you've had a bunch of times yeah. cupping with extraction and that's why like for your back surgery and stuff for people who are listening out there if you've had back surgery or surgeries what happens is the cupping is removes or takes this thing your your where you're injured up to the surface and then the extraction is a basically a large acupuncture needle which takes the dead they call it static blood the chinese but it takes that wound out and then fresh blood goes in and you just ah you feel yeah. better and that's what happened to me on a movie because i got injured on a, a movie the animal and then they sent this guy over and he stayed he bled me like a pig from like midnight till three o'clock in the morning but the yeah. next morning 6.30, I went to work. So Shaq used to get nailed on all these things. Yeah. And so when I, you know, when I was, a, when, when I was a rich movie star and I could do whatever I want, I would fly over with a bunch of guys. I took Dr. Shen with me and we're on the snake alley and he's drinking like, you know, snake jizz and snake piss and drinks, you know, and I'm going, you know, you can get to, you know, you know, you can get hepatitis from reptiles blood, right? 
you got I mean you must know that and you know you're okay with it over oh really no I said, you didn't know that you're a doctor what are you <laughs> nuts you're alone what are we doing here but anyway they used to kill the snake right in front of you it was a machismo thing you know yeah okay Kind of like the Taiwanese version or the Chinese version of bullfighting, whatever. They take the snake out and they, yeah, they, yeah, and they cut its head off. And it's like, you know, I never liked that kind of overt cruelty, but, um, you know, when in Rome, you're there, you're like, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, I was in Japan one time for a fight and a buddy of mine, he, he, he's Japanese. He owns a bar and his wife's from China. And, yeah. I go to see him, and they got those little kiddie pools, you know, little blue kiddie pools out front. And there's frogs in there, and there's turtles, you know. And he says, and "No, no, no, there's there's eels in there." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what they cook, and it's delicious. Yeah, yeah. Well, have you have you seen it where they slowly kill the eel? They, they chop it slowly, and then they put it back in the water, and so it's swimming with with a half a body, you know. <laughs> They'll take it out. I've seen them do it, and I didn't know what it was, but I knew that there were people were eating it like crazy. As a matter of fact, I was just in uh, in March. I was in Japan, and really, I love eel. It's called the unagi over there. Yeah. It's it's freshwater eel. Yeah. They take it out of that tank, and on the street, it's street. It used to be street food. When I was there, my dad took me there when I was eight uh, to Tokyo and, and to Japan, and they would take it out. And just throw it right on the barbecue alive, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, no, you know, well, so you, you don't go to a sushi place, you know. They, they put live crab on your on your rice, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, that was one of my last, my dad's last meals. My dad was a big fish guy; he loved crab and everything. But my 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 older brother is kind of a cruel bastard, and um, he would go into the place like in Korea. They were the eat dog, and he would go to this place. It's like, eh, I haven't talked to him in years, this brother. Yeah. But uh, I just, you know, that dog whole thing, I can't like, and I'm Filipino. And I'm like, I remember like when I was a little boy in Baguio, which is the mountain, um, you know, they had dog and it's puppy, by the way. And they would like, I remember being in the kitchen and it wasn't refrigerated. It was just in a drawer. And I go, what kind of, what is this? Because it looked like a big chicken. And uh, they said, it's meat, but it's not for you, Robbie. <laughs> like, oh, good, good. Okay. All right. So, but I remember was my dad's one of his last, I mean, he died, you know, he, he didn't have the best health, my dad. And, um, and I remember we went out to a sushi restaurant. My brother orders this lobster and they would, you know, they just, ah, lobster, and they bring it out and then they like make lobster sushi right in front of you right. when the lobster is still like, you know, yeah, it's still alive, yeah, screaming. <laughs> and I just don't know if that's necessary, you know. <laughs> I can't I can't go for that. No, but, no but my buddy had I need to have time between death and eating. Yeah. <laughs> like now, like an, that's why they age the meat to me. For me, is it's not the flavor. Oh, days, it's, yeah. it's, it's the time away yeah. from the, the killing. <laughs> Give it an opportunity for resurrection. If it feels like yeah. resurrection, then you can eat it. Yeah, yeah. He had his chance to come back. He's not okay. It's been a month. Put Dry him age. Let's eat him. Yeah, put him on a plate. Let's go. Yeah. 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 What's your go-to steak? Oh, I love ribeye. Love ribeye. Oh yeah, me too. Raw. I got a half a cow from basic from Tucson actually. Uh, right. the, yeah, in the fridge. You know what? By half a cow, you know what that means? Yeah. Fifty percent is like hamburger. Yeah, yeah. By half a cow, I didn't realize it's mostly much. Well, truth truth be told, thirty five percent of when you order a cow is going to be a hamburger, and that's all right. Hamburger, your grass fed meat, that's the best. Yeah, but it was tougher to barbecue though. You know it. Uh, if you barbecue the if you, if you barbecue too hot and too uh well hot and if you if you can't have it's got to be kind of medium medium rare otherwise it's too rough because it just like doesn't have the same fat. I like where I roll. Right? Yeah, pretty just, rare. Better. Yeah, yeah, as rare as possible. You know, you want, you want to be able to read the brand. You know, yeah, watch a wiggle. You know, burst the hair. Just, off of it, you know, just take the steak with a flashlight underneath, and that's yeah, I'm absolutely. Doing. Yeah, I, I know you cook it too much. It's you, you cook all the flavor out. You know, that's true. Yeah, I know, but I got little kids. I, I always want to cook, but then it's too rough, and it's like eating a eating your belt. You know, 
<laughs> what am I going to see your ass? What am I going to see? I'll t- I'm going to get down there in the summer when it's miserably hot. I'll drive down just to see how you survive. Oh man, are you kidding me? My house. We're let's see, Tucson's 15, 20 degrees cooler than than you guys, and then my house is five degrees, seven degrees cooler than Tucson. Yeah, I'll come down in the summer. I'll come back. I got to go off and do a couple of shows in uh, Australia just yeah. to escape escape the heat here for three weeks and then uh, I'll come down and we'll do this again. Yeah. You, know, adventures. you just did a movie with your daughter, right? Yeah. Daddy daughter trip. It's available. Amazon downloads. You got to go to Amazon and then download it. Daddy daughter trip. And it's, it's just a sweet movie. Yeah. You had to be in the next one. We're going to, we'll do We're going to do another one I'm trying to figure out what we're going to do here. I got to figure out something that'll keep paying for um, all these federal taxes of mine. Yeah, what was that John Wayne, John Ford movie? His the last John Ford where they did it in Hawaii. Um, you know where um John Wayne and and the other great actor would would fight every Fourth of July as their birthday, and they would fight every Fourth of July. What was that? What? what you got to look that up. You got a guy there. I don't have my guy. Yeah, he's looking it up. Yeah. Uh, they shot in Hawaii. Yeah, they shot in Hawaii. Yeah, it was John Ford's last movie, and he just got all of his buddies together. Um, uh, who was the 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 uh, actor um, who had a deep voice? <laughs> and uh, Ooh, you, yeah, Tramini. Well, um, the. Uh... You know, the thing is really weird is that um, what I heard, I wish I shot a movie out a few couple of years. Well, God, it's been nine years now in New Mexico. Um, and um, they there's still stories about what happened to John Wayne was that they took a bunch of dirt for the set that they were doing a Western. Yeah. And they took that dirt that was, um, you know, from where the nuclear tests were. Right, right. They dump that and use that on the stage. They put it on the stage yeah. so they could shoot on the stage. So everybody kind of breathed it in and everything for the right. six weeks they were there. Everybody on that show died of cancer 20 yeah. years later. Yeah. It, it was, God, what was that movie? Yeah, it was a big production. Um... Hmm. Boy, we, we're still having troubles finding this. Um, you need uh, uh, somebody under 30 doing this stuff for you. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I have. What? That's what I have. Get people under 30 done. I got his movie list, but I don't know which one it is. Wait, whoa, whoa. Don't, don't go zooming. Donovan's Reef. Donovan's Reef. Donovan's Reef. Holy crap. Good call. Who was the, who was the other actor? He was in... Um... The man who shot Liberty Valance too. Tell Peter Fonda? No, I mean, I mean, I mean, the, uh, not Peter Fonda. Um, Bruce Dern? No, 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 no. An older guy. Yeah. Hey, um, Jimmy Stewart. No, not Jimmy Stewart. He was in Iwo Jima. He got shot in the ass in Iwo Jima. There he is, Lee Marvin. Lee Marvin. Lee Marvin. What a man's man. Yeah, yeah he did it for all of us though with that paternity, with that uh, um, that suit with the girlfriend. What happened? What what kind of suit was that again? It wasn't a, a marriage lawsuit. It was a paternity lawsuit. No, it wasn't a paternity suit. It was um, if you just live with her, apparently oh, got to yeah. pay. Yeah, yeah. If you live with her enough years, you owe her money. Marriage, yeah. Like... See, so they weren't even married. No, that no, was thing. It's they, they, call it, they call it a marriage, so yeah. Yeah, I forget I forget the term for it because I mentally I'm 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 still blocking it out. Yeah, fuck, that was horrible. Horrible. I mean, yeah, you take care of a, you know, uh, most of these women all they bring into the relationship is the vagina, you know. And well, I didn't say that. All they contribute. It's all they contribute. I'm still yeah. I still work once in a while in show business, so I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot anymore. Yeah, but now let's go do let's go do Donovan's Reef. Let's make him do a remake of Donovan's Reef. I'm going to see that again. That's a good movie. Yeah. I do. I've got a lot of books here and I'm reading and I'm going to take, uh, like, I'm going to leave in a few weeks. Hopefully my groin will heal up. Yeah. I got to play with my, uh, I'm playing, uh, we're raising some money for the new church. 
Well, I'm playing with my priest tomorrow. <laughs> I got to golf tomorrow with my, my Brian Brian. priest. Groin and priest. That's... I'm such a competitive bastard like you. I I literally even with my pulled groin, I was out there. I had I practiced today. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to Melbourne, Australia, Brisbane, Australia, Newton, Newtown, Australia, Auckland, New Zealand. Wow. Yeah, do a few shows for the people. You know. Wow. You go to you go to It'll Knoxville, be... Tennessee. Wow. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go there in, in the in the summer. But I'm gonna come come down and see your ass. So you you cooked that ribeye for me? Is it grass fed? It's gotta be grass fed. Make sure and it fit. is. I'll make sure it is. Hell, well, I'm... got none of that grain finished. I know it tastes better. Grain you don't, finished. Oh, they, they can't absorb it. It's a waste. You're just throwing money away. They the, the grain, the corn, the 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 animals can't um absorb the corn. You know, but it does make it does it does increase the, the fattiness somehow. I don't know what it does, but it ain't good for them. It causes inflammation. Yeah. But um, you know, if you eat grass fed beef, it's just as it's just like eating um if they do it right, it's yeah. just like eating um salmon. So where do you get your beef at then? What what ranch? Um it's like uh I'll tell you right now. It's down there. Let me Patagonia go. Or so I'll look it up. I gotta look it up right here. It's um okay. All right, here it is. Ranch. Well, I got a lot of rancho kind of stuff here. Um okay, I gotta go under beef. Okay, it's called uh Heart Quest. Heart, Heart Quest. And it's Christy Heart Quest. And it's grass-fed beef and lamb. Heart Quest. Where are they? Where are they at though? Uh, they're just right below Tucson, about two hours south of there. I don't know exactly where, but you can look it up. Heart Quest, and it's really good. So they want me to. They want me to be partners with them. I just don't know enough about the. I got to look up and I don't know what the hell I'm doing anyway. But yeah. I'll figure out something. Yeah. But let's let's get together, man. And I'm gonna um. I'm gonna meet with a director tonight. And we're gonna see if we can make a movie here in Arizona. You yeah. got, we got to put you in it again. It's been too long. You're great in every scene, by the way. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I loved you in the Michael Mann movie. I saw you the other night in that. I love Michael Mann. I love Michael Mann. He's great. Yeah. He's, yeah. You can. I, he knows I, how to make a movie, right? I've been privileged enough to work for him three times. You know, I I did Miami Vice, I did Public Enemies, and then I did a um commercial. You know, um, uh, Verizon commercial, man, that was awesome, man, because. You know, he was directing me personally for an hour. You know, it was, and yeah. He was, yeah, it was awesome. He, he just knows what he's doing. He brings a confidence to it, you know. But you're great because you just, you know, you stand right next to him. You, you just come out of it like a 1940s movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I was like, oh, man, that's my buddy right there. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get together, man. I love you and I miss you. And we'll, I'll come down and we'll... Uh, you, I'll, I'm going to take you, but you got to be that grass fed. You got to show me how you cook it and keep it st still soft. Okay, partner. All right. All right. Let's do that. Do it. Let's Tell do your it. buddy, thanks for doing this with us. Yeah, thank you, um, sir. Give me the link so I can get it out to people too. Okay. All right. Send it to you, partner. Hey, so, okay. I love you, buddy. I will. I'll call you from there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, you take care of yourself, Don. I love you. We'll talk to you soon, brother. I love you, sir. God bless yeah, you. Family. God bless this country. Yeah, you got damn right. God bless this country. This on everybody else. <laughs> go look at my website. And if people want to, if you want to go to, if you're a protester for Hamas, you want to go to Iran, I'm going to pay for it. Don? I'll pay for it. I'll pay for your friend, too. You know, yeah. I'll pay for you. I'll pay for your friend. One way to it. Yeah. All right, brother. Love you, buddy. Talk hey, to you soon. Love you. Yes, sir. Bye bye. Hey, mate. Thank you for watching another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. You better like, subscribe, and share, or I'm going to come to your house. Thank you for watching another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. You better like, subscribe, and share, or I'm going to come to your house.